Okay, snow's a little soft. This snow is so sticky. Holy cow. Just gotta be careful how I ski in this. I don't wanna hear any critique about my skiing when it's April and like 45 degrees. Welcome, welcome. If you're new to the channel, my name's Elliot and you're watching Rickety Ski Reviews. Today we're going to be talking about the Head Core 87. Now, this ski was provided to me by Head Skis. I'm not paid by Head, I'm not associated with Head. I really have no skin in the game whether or not you buy these skis. I'm just here to tell you my honest opinion about these skis. So, without further ado, let's just jump right into it. Now, these are a very unique ski. They are ultra light, coming in at 1610 grams per ski they're classified as an all-mountain ski but they're definitely on the narrow end of an all-mountain ski at 87 millimeters width underfoot this ski i skied today was in the 177 length hardly any camber very healthy splay with pretty aggressively wide tips and a little bit of tail splay this 177 has a 16 meter turn radius, which is very, very aggressive. These skis have a Karuba poplar blend of wood in the core with graphene and a multi-layer carbon sandwich cap construction. Now these skis normally retail for $699, but right now you can find them on sale for $419. So baseline, 
value is okay, but I will say Head is very aggressive with their sales pricing, and I think for $419, this is an absolute steal. So I will provide a link down below if I can. If you're looking for a way to support the channel, if you click on that link, it's an affiliate link, and anything you buy for the next 30 days will be credited towards the channel. Or if you wanna buy these skis, that helps support the channel directly. It's not much if you found this review useful towards buying it and you end up buying it that's a pretty easy way to support the channel directly but now that we've talked about specs and price let's talk about first impression what did this ski actually feel like on the snow and honestly the first impression with this is that i think this is a carving ski in disguise it's kind of under that all mountain you know head course line but it really doesn't have a lot in common with some of the wider widths like the Headcore 105. This is first and foremost a springy, very reactionary carving ski. It's just very, very responsive. It's very quick to turn. It doesn't take a lot of boot pressure before it starts to turn. It's not very long like edge to edge time, having that narrower width. This is a very, very aggressive carving ski. If you're somebody who wants quick carving and responsive edge to edge kind of turn style, this ski is phenomenal. Now, it's not kind of in that Elon ripstick category where it's gonna get you in a position to make the turns for you, but it takes very, very little pressure to change the shape and have the ski get right onto edge. The other thing is you obviously notice this weight right away. It's just a very light ski and you feel it on your feet. When you kind of get a little bit of air, it's very fun. You can kind of, they're not like the most flicky skis, but when you do get up, they're very comfortable. The swing weight's low when you need to kind of do those quick shuffle turns. It's kind of striking how light this is and how responsive it is. When I was reviewing the Mirus Core, I used the term lightning in a bottle and that's kind of how these felt too. They're just ready to turn, and the turns they do make are very satisfying. But now that we talk first impressions, let's talk good, and then we'll talk about the bad. Because like I always say, every ski that has good features also has downsides. And honestly, this ski is like the rest of them where they're not even really huge flaws as much as they are choices. Every ski company makes choices when they're designing something. And there's always things that I like, choices I like, and choices I don't like. But without further ado, let's just talk about it. First off, this is a long list of good. I think that this feels a lot like it's kind of following in the steps of a QST 92, just trying to be really versatile while also responsive. Um, it feels like a more accurate QST 92, but it just has way less off trail range than the QST 92. But that's not a bad thing. I mean, you may decide that you care about carving first and foremost, and you just want a little bit of range off trail. And it is nice to have a very accurate turn, kind of exactly where you want the ski to go, it goes. I'd say it also feels really springy when you build up your pressure. It gives you a good platform to kind of step off of, or when you kind of load the ski and then it kind of relaxes, it gives you that kind of springboard effect getting you into that next turn, which is really fun and really satisfying. The odd thing I found actually is, because I really like the Head Core 93, it's one of my favorite all mountain skis. These are a little less stiff than the 93s. You'd think with kind of these narrower, more carving oriented skis, they'd be a little bit stiffer, but they're not. I think some of that has to do with that kind of carbon that they're using. But yeah, not nearly as stiff as the Headcore 93 counterpart. I will say the platform when you get it on is a very good, stable platform. It has some weaknesses, but overall it's strong and stable. But honestly, my favorite thing I like about the ski is the timing of it. It has really good timing. And what do I mean by that? When I say timing, I'm talking about how long it takes for the ski to react to pressure in your boot. Some skis might do it really quickly with short radius turns. Some skis might take a little bit longer or you have to kind of massage the pressure in. I'd say this ski has just exactly the perfect amount for that. It's responsive to your boot pressure without being overly responsive and making turns you didn't ask for. So I gotta say head hit it out of the park with just their pressure timing, the flex timing, the timing of carving this ski is phenomenal. I just really like how it responds to pressure and how it times out its turns. And that 16 meter turn radius is very satisfying when you're on groom runs. But now that we talked about the good, let's talk about the bad. The downsides honestly on paper is a pretty short list. There's not a lot of things I don't like about these skis. But I will say if you look at it, it's in categories that are really important to me. So there's two main 
downfalls of this ski. A minor one and a major one. The first minor one is that these wider tips tend to really get hung up on sticky snow. Now that is seasonal and that might even be regional depending on where you are, but I will say these wider core tips that kind of give you a little bit of added flotation or kind of that nice turn shape, they can work against you similar to the Atomic Horizon Tech. It can really grab onto sticky snow. Now, there's no perfect cure for sticky snow, but just wanted you to know because these skis are so light and because the tips are so wide, they can really aggressively grab onto sticky snow and struggle especially if you're a larger person like me. I'm six foot one, 230 pounds, so take that for what it's worth, but I found that these tips really grabbed on the sticky snow, and when it got like that, I had to be really careful on how I kind of took these through sticky snow and where I took them. Like if it was too steep, you had kind of that danger of going over the top. Now, that's not a big deal. I'd rather have that wide tip for a powder day, or I'd rather have that extra shape for nice clean turns, but just so you're aware, because if you buy these skis, you're gonna find out one way or the other, and I don't want you to be surprised. I don't care if you buy these or not, I just want the truth to be out there. So if you're buying it, you can at least be informed or not have the unpleasant surprise of, oh, I thought these skis were gonna be perfect, and I thought these skis were gonna do my taxes for me. No, I want to be realistic and tell you the skis downside. Now, that's the minor. Here is the major kind of barrier for me as to buying these. I probably wouldn't buy these, I'd probably buy the Core 93s just because I enjoyed them more. And here's why. These skis are considerably lighter than the Head Core 93s and I will add more responsive. You can get quicker turns, you can get shorter radius turns, you can get those turns kind of quicker and more on demand. But the big downside for me on these skis is dampness. These skis are not very damp. Because they've got that carbon all the way through it, it's a little bit more pingy. Not only that, but they're also very lightweight, so they kind of will get more chatter, especially on harder, more firm packed snow. I took these on an area where it was melted in one area, but then packed down in the shadows and frozen, and these chattered considerably. I also found kind of the end of their flex with that carbon. Now, it was hard to get there, but when I did feel like I bottomed out these skis, it was really unpleasant. And when I got into firmer snow, that chatter, that pigginess from the carbon was really unpleasant. Now, I don't hate all carbon skis. In fact, some of my favorite skis, like the Atomic Vantages in the past, were partially carbon. But when a ski gets this light and uses this much carbon, it can be really unpleasant, where some of those previous skis had a better balance of it. Maybe they only used it in part of the tips in a mesh, or maybe they used it in stringers like the Elan Ripstick. This key uses so much carbon that when you max it out and get it on hard snow, you really feel every bit of vibration and they tend to not be very damp. And for those of you who have skied on a lot of carbon skis, you know exactly what I'm talking about. It's a very distinct feeling where it just doesn't kind of even out the way that wood or tightenal does. Now, that's specific to me. I think if you look at the bigger picture of what the ski's doing for lighter skiers or for people who are looking for just a more responsive ski and don't need it to be at the top end of its flex all the time, you may not even notice that. So I think for a lot of people, you could highly recommend this. And I think what this ski is able to do with off trail performance, with versatility, with responsive turns, this ski is phenomenal. Zach skied on these as well, and he loves skiing on these. This was one of his favorite skis he skied on all year, and I can see why. He's a lighter guy, he wants a really responsive turn, he's getting really huge edge angles, and he's not kind of like, you know, as heavy as I am in making those big open radius turns. So, I think that you know, despite maybe something I don't like about the ski, I can see why a broader audience would really enjoy it. But just so you know, I like the Headcore 93 because it's a little bit damper and it has a little bit more of a top end with pressure, which I kind of like. But I think that this Headcore 87, you gotta be honest, it is a much more responsive ski than the 93 and definitely more than the 99, etc. So. I think that this is an awesome ski. I think it's really fun. Like I said, it feels a lot like a more accurate QST 92. The value on this thing is tremendous. It's really a beautiful turn and nice snappy responsive turns. But if you're somebody who likes to make those big open radius turns and really wants to press into the ski as much as you can, maybe consider a Core 93 versus the ski because this ski wants quick responsive turns 
And if you dive too deep into the ski's flex, you will find its limit. And, or, if you're somebody on the East Coast, I would consider the Headcore 93 over this, just because you do get a lot more chatter. And because these skis are so light, they're not very damp. On the East Coast, I'm not sure you need a ski this light. Maybe you do, you know. I speak kind of broadly when I talk about the East Coast. Maybe you're just on kind of corduroy, blue squares, or green circles. But the mountain I grew up skiing at in Northeast Vermont, that chatter would be a little much for these. They really don't have a lot in the way of dampness, but they're training that out for responsiveness and lightness, which I think is a choice. Overall, I think this ski is a very safe bet for somebody who wants a responsive turn, for somebody whose priority is carving, for somebody who likes quick and really, really easy to initiate turns with still a lot of good stability and giving you all of your energy back out of the turn. I know that people kind of talk about the QST 92 being a safe bet, but I honestly think that that ski is more oriented for the off trail performance. It's like 60% off trail, 40% on trail. And I think if you are looking for like an 80% on trail and 20% off trail, and you don't have to worry too much about really hard packed snow, this ski is a very easy recommendation. It's a great value, great performance. I really think this is a nice ski and I would have no issue recommending it to most people. If you're a pretty heavy person and you care about dampness, this is not that ski. There are plenty of other skis that do dampness a lot better. The new Nordic Enforcer, the 2025 version, or the Stokely Storm Riders, things like that do a much better job. But for responsiveness, this ski is hard to beat. So for me, I'm giving it a 9.2 out of 10. I thought it was tremendous. I really enjoyed skiing it. Zach also echoed that same sentiment. Thank you so much for watching this. Thank you, Head, for sending me these skis. Not every company is willing to do that. But more than anything, thank you everyone here watching. I really appreciate you guys being here, taking the time out of your day to watch my videos. It always means a lot to me that you guys take the time to watch this and I hope you found it helpful. If you did, please click the link below if you wanna buy it or if you're interested in purchasing it in the next month. That helps my channel out tremendously. But more than anything, just thanks for being here. And as always, I'll see you in the next one. See ya.